Dr. Brown, you had mentioned to me earlier before we started recording that not all doctors across the country, across the world use microscopes. What, why is that? Why is this not the norm? Well, first of all, I think that one of the reasons it's not used is that it frankly isn't taught in dental schools and in postgraduate training programs. You know, it, it's very interesting that people who have periodontal disease and clinicians who are treating it talk about treating pockets. In fact, that's what happens when gum disease starts. You get spaces between the gum and the tooth. And what's interesting about this is that if you have bleeding, which many patients have when they have periodontal disease, and the pockets are full of these bacteria, it's not a hard jump to understand that they are getting into your bloodstream, going throughout your body, and there have been all kinds of published papers on the relationship between gum disease and many systemic diseases. I mean, we have found these bacteria in the plaques uh, of Alzheimer's patients. There are all kinds of uh, cardiovascular uh, implications. So it's not taught because they focus on something else, which is pockets. Patients can't understand what pockets are. And it only leaves one possible solution, and that is to cut the pockets away. And we could talk for hours on how that's good or bad, but I don't think that's the purpose of our conversation here. You know, it's, that's often asked me, uh, why don't other use it? In fact, I was on my radio show last night, and it's one of the questions that came up. And the truth is, I don't quite get it. I mean, here, it's open. It's available. I don't really understand why, what, where, there's a, where the blockage is for the whole dental and particularly periodontal world to take advantage of this opportunity to see and help show the patient what's going on. I mean, I, I, I cannot answer that question. I really wish I could, but I know that it should be much more widely used. It should be much more popular. It's such a great tool in helping us determine the disease, treat the disease, and help the patient accomplish a cure of sorts. I think it's... Uh that the implement, implementation of it is a little bit tricky, and it's a little bit tricky to see and identify what's in the thing, in the microscope, and it's an expanse, and uh, you know things at rest tend to stay at rest. They're comfortable with treating just the the signs of the disease pockets, and they don't uh, really focus on the cause. I'd like to pick up on something there just for a minute. One of the reasons why I originally got started in this is when I came out of my training, I thought I was pretty good at what I was doing. And eliminating pockets is what we were taught. And what I found out was I could eliminate the pockets and those same patients who I had seen before three or four years later, came back and still had a recurrence of the disease because, in fact, we had eliminated the effects of the disease, but we hadn't eliminated the cause of the disease. Ditto for all of us. We were all trained at great institutions. I was trained at Boston University by the, the, one of the premier surgeons who went for zero pocket depth, but I found later on that that was a partial answer, but uh, it wasn't the complete answer, as Steve did. Unfortunately, I've seen many patients who've been treated <laughs> who've been treated conventionally with surgery, elimination of pockets surgically, and these patients they they just they don't want to go through that again. It may have been done on part of their mouth, and now that mouth that part of their mouth is sensitive. It's sensitive. oh, the traps food. They're more uncomfortable, maybe healthier, and not even always that. But they're they're you know they're they're much more uncomfortable than they were before the disease was treated. If we can treat it, and we all use the laser to treat it, we don't have to cut away that tissue. We can shrink these pockets and stop the disease process without without all the destruction that goes along with traditional pocket reduction and surgery. I know we've all 
We've okay, all seen, yeah. we've all seen, I've had patients come in who've had literally full mouth surgery three times, you know, and they're just, they're just saying, you know, I've done everything I can, but people just keep cutting away the pockets. It's like, I think it's like calling in the carpenter to repair your house when you have termites and the termites are still there after they've repaired it. And to pick up on that, the patients who get this and see it become engaged with their own health. And in my case, and I'm sure in the case of both of my colleagues here, patients come in and they ask when they're on maintenance, they come in and ask, are you going to take a slide today? Because that people want to score well. They want to see things that are getting better. And they love to see the evidence of it because it's, it's reinforcing of what they're doing. Mm. 